How do you build the adaptation investment case in an African context? CDKN Africa brought together colleagues from around the continent to share insights on this important topic. Development partners are increasingly requiring a clear investment case before they are willing to financially support adaptation projects. Paul Watkins has developed a three-part framework for adaptation that can help policymakers identify appropriate adaptation projects to address the current, medium and long-term development and planning goals. Part 1 of the framework focuses on low-regret adaptation to address current weather risks. A good example would be adapting to existing droughts and floods by planting climate smart crops. Part 2 focuses on building adaptation into near-term decisions that will have a long lifetime. For example, screening new infrastructure for its robustness and sustainability in the context of climate change. Part 3 of the framework focuses on early adaptation now to start planning for the longer term and is focused on monitoring, learning and research. It also provides information to help address uncertainty of future projects. When approaching policymakers and investors, it is vital to bring tailored adaptation projects to target a defined problem that is relevant to wider national development goals. The next step is to find the right people in the political system who have the power to make it happen. This means that when planning for adaptation, you also need to understand the wider political economy. How are policies and regulations, as well as government and other institutions, all likely to affect the implementation of a particular adaptation project? Case studies from Uganda, Ethiopia, Kenya and South Africa show that building trusted relationships and strategic partnerships are key to influencing policymakers around adaptation. A Uganda case study showed that using participatory processes is a powerful means of gathering evidence from the ground up in order to influence national adaptation policies and investments. Because systems are complex, with many interlinkages, there will always be trade-offs in any adaptation solution. When designing an adaptation investment case for a specific adaptation need, always take a holistic approach that considers wider implications and addresses the particular priorities of the country, region, sector in question. What are some new approaches and opportunities to support adaptation? African Risk Capacity is an African Union-supported innovative insurance provider that offers sovereign insurance to African countries facing climate change risks. In response to taking out a policy, release of funds is triggered by a predetermined extreme event, such as a drought. Governments receive the payouts and use them to implement pre-approved contingency plans. To complement their existing extreme events insurance products, a new product, the Extreme Climate Facility, is being developed to help countries address the risks of long-term climate change. This will be donor-supported and leverage finance from the private sector through a catastrophe bond. Payouts will be based on adaptation investment plans that identify long-term risk reduction needs, as opposed to funding emergency response. The Green Climate Fund has enormous funds available for adaptation projects. However, currently there are very few African project proposals of sufficient quality that meet all the stringent requirements. CDKN is already helping countries identify appropriate projects and write quality proposals to access these funds in Ethiopia and Kenya and will look to expand this assistance. Our conclusion. With the right investments, a significant opportunity exists in Africa to build adaptation measures directly into new infrastructure developments, often at little additional cost. Experience shows that governments often struggle to engage with adaptation as it is seen as an unknown future economic burden that contrasts with immediate development priorities. By identifying short, medium and longer term actions and better understanding the political economy of decision making,
we can support policymakers in building more resilient communities that benefit from development now and ensure that gains will continue in the face of changing climate conditions.